Okay, we are going to go over one block in row eight, and it's the first half is block F, and it's a corker. It's a really, really weird block. So I'm going to spotlight the tablet and let mom come on and start this because we've got a, quite a number of items that we need to go through today. Okay, mom, it's all yours. All right. If I get to wandering, pull me back. Okay. Okay, as she said, this block is quite a corker. This is the block itself. That's the finished one. And when I wrote the directions or interpreted the directions that mom had written, I had to go back to her and we discussed and discussed how to write these. So since I had so much trouble in the, in the writing to get it to where you guys could understand it, this was the perfect one for a, um, a video. So that's the block we're going to do. It's pieced and it's applique all together, but it kind of goes together in a weird way. So... Shall I pull this out of the way? Yeah, you can pull that out. Okay. Of the way. Um, we have somebody else joining us. Janet, thank you for joining us. I know you're a new new subscriber, so appreciate that. Um, if you. there's any questions you've got along the way, either raise your hand or, or connect or talk or whatever, and um, we'll go from here. Um, this is the block that is in row eight, and it's block F, so it's the one right before the center of the of the of the row. Okay, mom. Okay. This is quite a block to start with. <clears throat> and there's something that I want to touch on before we get to the block. And it's what I call bias bloom. I think we've all heard that before. <laughs> and we kind of ignore it because it really kind of sounds mm -hmm. abstract. Sounds abstract, but boy, it can mess you up like crazy. Okay. So bias bloom is bias, you... yeah, bias bloom happens when you take a square piece of fabric cut on the grain line. Yeah, that's cut straight on straight grain. It's a square. Okay. And then you cut it on one diagonal. A 45. A 45 degree. So from one diagonal to the other. Okay. Now that's a half square triangle. Then you have another term that is quarter square triangles and it's when you take a square cut on grain like this one is and you cut it on both diagonals so that means you've got a straight grain here but you've got a bias here and a bias here correct okay now logic tells us that this angle right here should be 90 degrees Okay, we can test that one way or another. We can lay this piece of fabric on a sheet of paper, which has four 90 degree corners, or we can take it to our mat, a cutting mat, and lay it down so that this point is right there. At any corner. At any corner, gotta be. Now, look at where this point is now. It should be on this line. This points out here, it should be on this line. That's bias bloom on a quarter square triangle cut. You'll get the same thing. Let me find another one here. This little guy was cut. Now, this one here, this, this was a square and it was cut on both diagonals. When did so you cut that? I cut this one last night. Okay, so less than this 24 one was hours. Last night, less than 24 hours. And I have handled it very carefully. You want to treat these very carefully. This one was cut this morning about 9 o'clock, or no, it was about 8.30. And oh. I cut it on one diagonal. Now, it's beginning to bloom because you see this point's not quite on the line. And if I do this... Yeah, look at what it, it does. gets even bigger. It's not as bad as it is on a big piece of fabric, but it's still there. That's that's the bloom. Now to counteract that, this one I don't need, so I'll put it away. That's for another project. This one here. That's a piece that you need for putting in the block. Putting in the block. Okay. Well then let's that's by now one other thing I want to show you. Talking okay. about bias bloom. This is a piece of fabric. It's an inch and a half wide. It's cut on the on the bias grain. This is bias. This is bias. 
these cor these tri these dime or angle 45 degree here that's the only straight grain there is on this cut mm -hmm. now it's okay but we want to handle it very carefully on this one i'm going to stretch it it's probably not an inch and a half but you see how this edge is beginning to ripple we can see it better on the with this so right so this one is now slightly narrower than the one and the larger the piece the more pronounced it'll be but there's another case of bias bloom so that's what your bias does and it's not a lot right here there's about four, a sixteenth of an inch. I was going to say four or five threads there. Yeah, about but it. when you're you're looking at precision, that can be a, a breaker on these blocks, especially. Yeah, because they're all so little. Okay. Okay, that's enough for that lesson. I think I bored everybody to tears by that. Now let's go back to this one. Last night, I pieced unit one and unit two. Well, this working pretty well as a background. Okay, let's start with looking at the back of the block itself. We've got a circle here in the middle, and then we got all sorts of little seams out here. Every one of these pieces is a unit, and you you put it together, mm -hmm. and then you sew the seam to add it on. This is a unit on its own, which means that you're going to be making a block that has a hole in the middle. And then you're gonna fill that hole in the middle with something that looks like that. Yeah. Okay, uh, have we lost anybody? You kind of follow where we're headed to. Griffith, got another Okay, uh-huh. Okay, I'm gonna pull this out of the way. So mom just pieced this half circle and that half circle I using the stable together. piecing general directions and sewed them together we still have the extra fabric out here we've not trimmed it out yet it's not that big of a deal at the moment we're going to do that at a later point right and the instructions that you got told you after this was all after this seam was sewn and pressed toward unit one told you to stitch on the red line and then put it away set it aside leave and, it alone and for those of you who are new to this the red lines are our first first line applique lines we'll go into that and there's some other videos that are going to explain that a little more in detail but that's an that's going that now is a pieced part of this block that's now going to be an applique so we're going to put it aside at the moment and move on to something so that goes over there okay now the next thing to do is to piece the the units like this and before we go any farther i'm going to give you a little hint when you get your get to cutting this out, you're going to have what is it, 18 pieces already together? I think it is. There's a lot of pieces in this block. Mm -hmm. Each one of these is a fourth of the block. Okay. And then we got one right here. So each fourth you're going to put together as a corner with a bite out of it. Okay, to begin with, I cut apart my foundation and I clipped units one and unit two together that's this one. which is what makes the center so they go together we clip them together I keep it together then I chose units three through I think it's three four five six which make up one it is with this one. okay make makes up makes one up quadrant. one of the quadrants and I clipped all of them together put it aside i did that with all of them so that's all these clips all of these are one of those quadrants one of, one of these quarters that's for you to do I, I this is just the extra okay let me get back to this here so i pieced the quadrants i let i left got these pieced now we're going to fill in the last we're fill quarter. In the last one this piece just has a piece of fabric on it that's it it stays there this piece gets a piece of fabric put on it and trimmed out here. You're, we, pre you're preparing for the preparing for the, applique. the first thing I did after I got these trip separated was I cut out and I left the red line on the applique okay. of this piece. And then I glued it to the fabric and then I trimmed out. So I've got a, about a quarter inch turned under. Okay. Before, and we, before we go farther, 
Um, we've got some new people on here and please do not get discouraged and think you cannot do this because we're going quickly over this. We've gone over the appliques in many, many different videos that we've done leading up to this. And so there is a background in this, a very detailed background in all of the appliques. So please don't get, get a, a case of the heebie-jeebies and say, <laughs> hey, I can't do this because we're going quickly over this and there is a history on this. Some of the, the previous videos that we've got will explain this in a lot more detail. So just kind of sit back and relax. And this is one of the more difficult blocks in the entire quilt. Yeah, and make up your mind that nothing's going to shake you because it will work. It will work. Okay, this one's put, put aside. This one's glued on after I've trimmed this out. It's glued on and trimmed and it's put aside. The next thing to do is these units here. And you'll notice there's a number 11. Get it up here so I can read it. They will go together. Number 11, circled numbers. Number 11 goes to number 11. Okay, on this one, I have pieced all of the pieces onto this unit. And I'm ready to press. Now, remember, we've got a bias edge here and a bias edge here, and that's where that bloom comes into play. So I'm going to take this. And you don't want to pull your fabric with your fingers. Right. You want to use a stiletto or something to help guide it. I turn this up. Now, let's see here. Let me get my little pen. And I'm going to take and put some moisture right along here. And when I get to this part, I just tap. I don't drag the um, tool or the uh, the tip, pen. the pen, whatever you want to call where it. The I don't, where, where it's sewn, yeah, it's stable. But here it's not. So I tap, 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 kind of on the seam line. So you're, uh, you're trying to not, not make, stretch the bias. Right, not stretch the bias. Then the next thing I do is slip my finger under and I go right in here where it's been sewn and I push that up with my finger, holding it down here. Just push it up enough so that you know there's no crease there's in it, no that you've crease. got a good turn on it, but not stretching it. Then from here, I'm going to hold it. Then I'm going to run my finger out that way and run my finger out that way. And that creased it. Now, and it's a light press. Yeah, but I'm going to press it now. Okay, she's taking it over to the iron on the other side and just straight down on it. Straight down on it. Don't do not do it like you're ironing your shirt. Now, let's look at this. This is where that bloom comes into effect. Well, right away, it's panic time, but don't panic. Okay, we're going to have trouble with the light. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe we can. Okay, maybe I'm okay. I'm better. All right. All right. This is fine right here, but out here, it's not fine. It's not covering the seam allowance not, here where it right. should be. So we turn it over, and I'm going to take this stiletto, and I'm going to move this point. And see, well, I've created a buckle right there. Okay, so let's stop right now. You are not pulling this. Right. You're just moving it up. Right, because see, it was... It was here. On. Um, row eight, block F, as in Frank. I don't know if we need a little, but I, if everybody can see, there's a there's a dotted line is right there, even, and I'm trying to get it evenly. It's yeah. hard to see. The camera's hard to see that. It doesn't want to see that real well. I don't know if a light behind it is going to help or not. I don't know. Anyway, that's where that is. Now, it does help. It does, does it? Help. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now you can see everything is lined up nice and straight, but there's a little bubble right here. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. That's the bloom of the fabric that we've got to unbloom. Okay. Now that 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 bloom, this is okay here, and we've got this bloom here. So it means I take it to the iron. And I'm going to press. Okay, before you do that, mm -hmm. hold it up this way. Oh, and the videos, all of our videos are on, you. we got a YouTube channel. So you can go out there and look at them. And we try to post them on the Facebook page, um, oh, the Mrs. Stickle Sampler Facebook page. So they should be in both places. 
Okay. So there's the extra. There's the extra bloom. And that's right. the fabric that bloom that you want to leave in there. It has to be shrunk back down and put in its place. So I'm going to go over here to the, well, I'll bring my little iron over here. It's easier to see. Okay. And I've got that held right there where I want it. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to carefully press and most of it is gone. Does the heat shrink it back again? A little. Yes. The heat will cause it to go back. Now, another thing that I'm going to okay. do. Okay. But you don't want to, you don't want to let it pull back over mm -mm. and create a bubble here. So this has to stay in, in its spot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does mm -hmm. starch help too? Pardon? Does starch help too? Um, If you starch it before you cut it, it might. Sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes okay. it makes but, it too hard to handle on a little piece. But not at this point, you're saying? I don't know. Uh, would would start to use hard to handle I, on this point? Yeah, because you've got to, if you starched it and it grows, then the it starch is going to get in the way from when you want to bring it back to where it should be. But if you starch it before you cut it, would that keep it from blooming as much? Usually, I, I I've never tried it. I, I I starch very very heavily. Okay, and I don't have bloom typically, okay. but I, when I say heavily, I'm talking like um, uh, Lisa Bonegan heavy. <clears throat> so where you drench it, let it dry completely, and then iron, and then okay. cut. Okay. I was oh. just looking at the different things. Okay, I'm going to put my finger here, take off the clip, roll this fabric back, and I'm going to put some glue right there. Now, the glue we're using is Elmer's Washable School Glue. The purple one so you can see it when you're done. Right. Now, I'm going to put that right back down. Now, it's going to stay there. I don't need the clip anymore. So all you're doing is clip, you're putting your glue out here so the mm -hmm. point stays where it's going. Point's you stay still there. have this. It about you're, disappeared. It just about disappeared. Uh-huh. Okay. The glue will help because I've just, that's it. Okay. Okay. That piece is done. Now, the next one that we're going to tackle, that one's ready to go. This one here, we've got to put the next piece on it. I don't know whether I want this cutting mat or not. Oh, yeah, I don't want it. This is the piece that has to go here. Okay, we've got a, this is the shape of it here. Mm -hmm. And this is a quarter, this is a triangle. And this obviously is not a triangle, but it works. Triangle is just the easiest piece for you to cut so that you can, you can at least get the right it's size. Look, that yeah, fits. and it's the least amount of waste. Right. Okay, so we've got to put this piece on here. I've already trimmed the seam allowance back to a quarter of an inch. So we're going to put this thing on here okay to let, begin with let's lay the piece down the way we want it to go huh i've got stuff i don't have this covered so evidently you don't have it on there the right way that's right so i'm going to rotate it now it's covered okay so now you've got it oriented the correct way mm -hmm. okay the next thing i want to do is take it and lay it here flip it over flip it over right sides together and i've got I've got this point right here outside this dash line, which is where I want it. The dash line is the outer line. That's where your your quarter inch seam allowance will be cut onto that piece. So you want your fabric to be outside that by a small amount. Yeah. All of your pieces in foundation piecing are cut oversized simply for this reason. So you just want to make sure that you don't have, you don't, you've got enough fabric to cover the spot. Okay, now then I've got a pin hold I, that I'm not normally a pinner, folks. I'm sorry, but this type you want a pin. Okay, now does this need to line up with that? Does it need to go straight? Nope, because okay. this piece I want not yet. Okay, this piece here, this is the bias. Now, this one had bloom and I played with it up. So if there's bloom, you take your pin and you tease this up until. This is on the line. We don't care about this right here. We're, we're going to take care of that in a minute. And we pin this side in place. Okay. Now, 
I'm going to go to sewing machine after I move all the stuff off. Okay. We do a 1.5 stitch length. stitch length. And just a straight stitch. And on this machine, most machines that I work on when I do stable piecing or any kind of foundation piecing is I want a open toe foot so that I can see where the needle is. I want to be able to see it at all times. I want to, I want to watch it sew down that line. Okay, so I've got the fabrics next on the bottom, the foundations on top, and I'm going to sew from this point to this point and not beyond on either one of them. So I'm going to set the needle down, and on this stuff, I backstitch first. I don't want three rows of stitching. Okay, I've got a glare on the on my what I'm looking at on the machine and I don't know that I can fix that. I don't it's, know about that either. I don't know if you guys see that or not. There's they can't even see the line. Can you come at it from this direction? Yes, ma'am. We see it. You you do see it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. There's a right, there's, there's a glare. Go, right? We can't see anything. There's a glare. We can't see anything. Can you tell me please which um row and column the block is located in that you're working on? We're working on row eight block F. Eight Thank block you. F. Okay, and okay. I'm not sure that I can get. I'm going to sew backwards. That helped. Did the, I don't? It helped me. Did it help you? I'm sewing backward until I get to the end of the line. Now I'm going to sew forward. And remember, the feed dogs are helping to work in this bloom. Okay, stop at the end of the line and backstitch a little bit there because we're not over sewing. What over sew? Not on this one. And the pins you put in were outside where your your sewing was going to be, so you didn't even have to move them. Right. You're now new. You're gonna take them out. And the next thing I'm gonna look at is well, I don't have to look at it. I'm gonna tap, 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 and then I'm gonna drag it across, and then tap, tap. Okay, the next thing, well, now it's press time. Finger under, right kind of in the middle of where I sewed, push that up, and run that out there. Now, I can already see that that's going that way, but I'm going to press this. Now, the next thing, yep, it's a little bit off. Okay. It's it's just barely in there. So I'll turn it over. I'm going to take this and move this up. And what All you're right. looking at good. is this along here. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the bloom is not bothering anything here. So this piece is going together real good. A little bit of glue. This is the one I'm, I want to have straight if I can. Can I ask a question about the glue? Pardon? Can I ask a question about the glue? Sure. You haven't had any trouble with the glue color doing anything? No. I've been using this for 15 years on this stuff, and I've Perfect. never had a bit of trouble with anything. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that piece is done. This piece is done. Now, the next thing in your directions on this one is going to tell you to clean up all the outside edges. So this is, bear with me while I bore you. And you can use a, a uh, um, you can use a rotary cutter on this, but if that ruler slips, and you cut into that seam allowance and cut too far. <clears throat> so you can use the rotary cutter, use the scissors, whichever one you're more comfortable with. Yeah, I'm using scissors because I'm a different environment than I am when I'm at my home when I'm working on these. Okay, now that one's trimmed. This one has to be trimmed.
That one's ready. <clears throat> okay. So you got those two. These pieces. are going to have to be trimmed. They also. all have to be trimmed out. Okay. So these are the these are the four pieces that are going to go together to make one fourth of this block. So you do one fourth at a time. So she did these these two pieces with the bloom with the, the bias bloom, and you can see how how that affects. Now trim them all out, and we're going to put the quarter of it together. This block I have not attempted, but <laughs> she said it takes it is probably the most difficult block out of the whole batch. Um, it's got some different things. Bias bloom is something that affects this block worse than any we've found so far. Um, so it was a good time for that lesson. Okay. Number 11. <clears throat> the only one we have only, we have two numbers here, 11 and 13. And these two have to go together. So they have to go together on the circled 11 side. So we got 13 out here in a straight line and 12 is on this side. The next thing to do is put them together. And okay. a point, point of reference for anybody new at this point is that when we have multiple units that you're putting together, like we do on this, then we number them so that you know which two pieces to put together and in what order. So you match the circled numbers. Those are how you put your units together. So those that's just a point of reference at this point. Right. So she's matching the circled 11s. And normally you go in numerical order because we've done we've figured it out the best way to put them together. Okay, now another little thing. We always tell you to stop at the end of the line. <clears throat> well, now I'm going to tell you to break that rule. I'm going to sew with this side up. So I'm taking a friction pen, and I want to sew the whole seam. And I only need to mark it on this side. Now, these these seams will abut. Yeah, they, they, should, they will nest. So at least you know you've got that in the right place. And I'll stick my pen through there, and the pin is out on the line here it comes out on the line here so you know you're in good shape right okay now then i want to check this point here with this point check well i'm a little bit below it but that's not a bad thing okay all right so i'm gonna hold it tight i'm gonna lay it on my machine bed and don't let go of it until you got and then set the needle down here i'm going to stow from the outside edge no back stitching here but once i get to the point go a couple stitches behind it then i'm going to back stitch because in when the you long get, run when wait. you get done with that let's show <laughs> where you did right. the back stitching Okay, I back stitched. Right here. And right here. Because when you take this foundation out and put this block together. You're probably going to pull these stitches loose. Not intending to, but it just happens. So those two are together. Okay, so we back stitch. Right here. And right here, mm -hmm. and we sew clear out to the end here and here. Mm -hmm. Sewing out to the end just keeps the pieces in place so that they're easier to work with when you start putting the other units together, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is just to hold the fabrics in place. The back stitch here is to make sure the seam doesn't come out. Right. Okay. Right. Now then, this looks good. I right, we nested. I'm gonna take the seam the foundation out of the seam allowance only. And you see how easy that comes out. It's that's a, it. That's all there is to it. Okay. Now, I on the pat on the example over here, we pressed the seams. These seams, I pressed them on toward the center. On the one I've just made, I pressed it in a rotating manner. It doesn't really matter. But to keep it in context with what I'm already doing, I'm going to press the seam allowance toward the even numbered unit. This is there's fifteen, there's sixteen, so it goes this way. Now I've got to dampen this and get over here to my ironing pad. Okay. And all of these marks are on the units themselves. 
all of the directions that are written are written specifically pressing which way showing you back um the back of the the um of uh, the block you get a pic you got there's a picture of that so you can see what where the pressing was how it was done but if there's special pressing directions that comes into it and is part of the directions themselves okay that piece is ready now i've got a dog ear sticking out here and i don't want it because those things tend to cause you problems and also your eye is telling you that this line's not perfectly lined up with this one don't worry about it on this block once we get this seam stone it's not going to matter now we've got the number 12 this piece has 12 so it's the next one to go on and here again we're going to stitch clear across so i laced a straight edge on here mark mark and it goes on here and that doesn't have any seams to nest because the piece you're adding on is just a solid yeah, color it's just the background but we do want the points to match here so through here oh i'll get it eventually pretty close okay okay i'm gonna hold it with a clip and then i'm gonna take the pin and i'm going to the other end And the reason I'm being so picky with these points is this right here and this later after is the outside edge of the block. So we want those to match pretty well. Okay, down, down the road, down the road we go. So we're sewing now the line. We're sewing, this is the one she sewed through the seam allowance. And then back tack or the tie down either back tack or, or tack off tack yeah, off you know back stitch or tack off where that where the the seat the two seams join and then go out to the outer edge of the of the foundation right all right now it's not perfectly and at this point on this block it doesn't make that much difference it's all going to work Remove the foundation from the seam line. And I'm going to press toward this little piece here. Okay, piece done. The next one to go on is this piece. And it has 13 and 13. And this one has 13 and 13. And these don't, these numbers don't have to match up. It's just getting the seam together. So you want to match points. And again, I want to sew with the plain piece on top. And it's going to be pretty easy because that should match. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't have much choice. Going through, and it doesn't look like it wanted to match at all. It must not have trimmed something exactly right. So there you can find out whether your trimming is mm -hmm. exactly the way you want it or. Okay, so you're going to sew out to the outer edge mm -hmm. of these lines too. Mm -hmm. Okay. What did you throw? I threw it over there, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, right on. And I'll clip it and then out here, same place. We're, we're doing pretty good. Better not brag, right? Yeah. Pride goes before a fall and all that good stuff. Now I'm just checking to make sure I'm pretty much on the line. We've got kind of a longer seam in there, so you make sure that the the fronts and the backs are lined this up. This one's not exactly on, not enough on this block. It's not enough to worry about. Okay, same thing. Don't want that little thread to get pulled out of the needle. 
And most of the time you'll see us, we'll set the needle before we put the feet, put the presser foot down simply because it just makes more sense to roll the needle down and put it in the right place. And that way you're not always up and down with the presser foot. Okay, so that seam is together. And again, foundation out of the seam allowance. Foundation out of the seam allowance. And it didn't, it not very far off, not enough on this one to worry about. Okay, now this one presses. To the place of least resistance, just like water. You want water will take the the path of least resistance, and on this case, this fabric is going to do the same thing. Sometimes the pressing is kind of whichever way the fabric wants to go. <laughs> Sometimes we persuade it, and then other times we just don't even bother to persuade it. We just let it do its own thing. And you're putting a little extra stuff on those lines so that whenever you press, you get a good crisp. I want a good, clean, sharp press. Okay. Okay. There's the final quadrant. There you go. So you're going to make four of those mm -hmm. and then put them together, matching up the circled numbers. 15 to 15. Okay. And we're back to marking. I'm going to sew from this direction. I want to start out here. So it goes here. Okay. I'm going to put it on here like this. And what I have to match up now is this little point, even though there's no foundation out here. It's the end of where the foundation was. Right. Okay. And then match this up also. So that outer point, because that that's outer the outer point. edge of the block. Yeah, this is the outer edge of the block, and this point needs to match. And you are going to be, you're not going to be nesting seams. The seams, they're going to lay right on top of one another. So you may have to hold them really good. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's no way to get them any other way. Otherwise, we would have got that figured out already. Okay, down here. All right. I think uh, my, my this machine and I are going to have to come to an understanding real soon. <laughs> it's old. Yes, it is. It has sewn a lot. And I'm going to back stitch here and I'm going to sew off the end. And we're sewing off the end carefully because all you're doing is sewing through. And I'm going to leave some thread. I don't want to cut them off real short there. Okay. Now, press the seam open. And we're going to do the same thing with this seam. We're okay. going to close that circle. Here again, match them up. Do the same matching, mm -hmm. the same sewing all the way through. You're just going to close that circle. Now you're going to have a, you're going to have a donut, square donut. You're going to have a square donut. <laughs> square donut with a hole in it. You can tell what I'm thinking about. Okay. Into the machine, set the needle, sew forward. Sew backward, forward, sew backward. Very short seams. And sew off the end. Carefully. And the reason that the fabric is doing what it's doing in there is because I don't have a regular all-purpose foot on the machine. If I did, it wouldn't 
it would be wiggling yeah. yeah it wouldn't be wiggling like that okay those seams are sewn now then i'm going to press this open but before i do that one other thing you're going to be turning this edge as an applique so you need to get rid of the bulk that's in these seam allowances take this take your your piece and fold it in half like this we've got this that little piece of thread needs to be saved. That didn't get sewed. Why? Well, how come? Don't know. But it has to be sewed. Oh, so evidently something didn't happen. Yeah. And it could be that I was pa not paying attention last night when I got to that point and I just didn't sew across it. And what happened was the needle poked holes in the fabric and through the, yeah. the foundation and it just kind of stuck. Yeah. So interesting. Okay. Let's see if I can thread this needle with any degree of accuracy. There is really a hole in there. I got it. Okay. 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 Got to go back and... and... This is one that you would have sewed last night? Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Redo. Yeah. Finish up. And this time I'm going to hold it down. And this is hard to get a camera in because Not me fingers are in the, way. the fingers have got to hold the fabric and it's really hard to do. Okay. Now back to where I wanted to be in the first place. Okay. Now, you don't want this extra bulk in here. I don't want it. I hope you don't either. So, being as that's the case, that we don't need. It's out of the way. Right beside those stitches, cut to the foundation. Then turn it and cut there and take corner. out that little corner. I've done it here. I'll do it on the other two. Cut up to the foundation, then turn it and cut right along that foundation piece. Yeah, but don't cut through this stitching. If you pull, have to pull away a few threads, so be it. Okay. And the next one. Because you're, you're getting rid of the bulk for the applique you're getting ready to do. Yes. Okay. Okay, while you're doing that, I'm going to... Okay, I've got that, that done. One. I'm going to go take the, the foundation out of these, and I'm going to press all these seams open. Or she's pointing out some okay. things to you. What she's doing is she took the foundation out of what's going to be under here and here and right there and right here. This was the original block that she did, and there is extra bulk in here. That's the reason that she's cutting this part away. It's it's applique down, it's turned under, it's stitched down here. It's not going to come apart. So uh, alleviating that bulk in there by getting rid of those little corners of the fa of the um, fabric helps with with this bulk. Now under here, you can see how she cut at an angle, and it still didn't get rid of enough bulk to make it a product that she was happy with. See how that one was done too. There was, a, there was an angle cut. So that's where she figured out this, cutting it as a squared out, square out the corner does much better at relieving the bulk that's in these places. So that's what she's been doing and that's the reason, because this one's a little bit bulky right in here. I can feel these and you can see it. If you're looking at the actual block itself here, you can see where it's a, it's, it's heavy here. And it also, because you're putting the applique down, you're going to stitch right along this. Your, your foot of your machine has to go up and over the top of all of this. And then it goes down to a, like two or three layers here. But you can really feel the difference in that without having that pulled out of there. So that's that's the reason for her doing what she's doing on that one. Do we have any questions or comments? I see 
and I'm not sure what your first name is, L, and I don't remember. I remember your last name. But anyway, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but is there anything that, that uh, and I know this is kind of, there's a lot of background in this that you haven't seen. Don't don't panic. No, don't panic, please. You've got, you've got a lot of, of ways to go before you get this one. Yeah. Okay, now then, I'm ready to clip because I've got to turn this. You don't want to clip here. You want to clip on each side of it. You're clipping now to make the clips to turn the applique. Right. So I'm going to clip, and these clips are close together, and they don't go to the app to the. They got a little bit of, a little bit of uncut before you get to the edge there of the foundation. I can. I think I've got a pretty good picture on that one. Oh, good. Okay, and you're coming up close to that, and okay. then go to the other side. Mm -hmm. It's just another piece that you're click that you're going to turn, so it's part of the applique. Kind of like watching paint dry, yep, right? It is. Mm-hmm. But if you don't do it right, even if we don't do it right here, then you get to see the mistakes that we've already made. So if we're taking our time with it, if we tell you do this or don't do this, normally it's because we've had an issue with it. We did it wrong. We did it too fast. Or something just plain old didn't work and we had to go back and rethink it. Yeah, because this quilt is not one of these whip it together and have it ready by Friday night. It doesn't work that way. Trust me. No, mom's been working on this one for probably three years now. And as we're doing more of the rows, okay, she's even finding trip. more updates that can be done to make it easier, make it look better. Right. Okay. Okay. Now I have a choice. I don't know. Well, some of you have seen, saw the video where I showed how that you could put this down with glue. Ordinarily, I would dampen it and I'd turn it back and press it. For me, I think glue is a little more expedient today. Doesn't It doesn't in any way make it difficult to applique either by hand or machine. So I'm going to do glue on a part of it. On this one here, I'm going to put a little bit of glue on that fabric right there because I want it to stick together. That's on the seam allowance that that the applique piece is going to stick to. Right. And then I'm going to put a little bit of glue around here on the foundation. And she's angling the, the glue stick so that we don't get the full force of it. We just get... I don't want a big glob of glue. I just want enough to hold it. Enough just to hold the piece of fabric in place. Okay, now then, I'm going to take this, and I'm doing this just with my fingers. I don't need an iron. There it is. Now I'm going to go on. That will hold that down. A little bit more around here. I wish they made glue sticks with a pinpoint applicator, but I don't think I'll be able to talk the company into doing that. I don't think just for us they would do that. I don't think so. I don't think we have the right pull. Right. We could always wish, though. You might be surprised Quilters Unite. Do what? I said you might be surprised Quilters Unite. Just a bit of trivia. Um, we just might, but that was sure would... It would be nice if those glue sticks had a point on them. Yeah, or well, were smaller. The people who make the people who make freezer wrap discontinue yeah. freezer wrap, and then the quilters threw an absolute conniption fit, yes. and they started making freezer wrap again. Ah, well, that would be the, that'd be the thing to do if we could get something that's that kind of thing in a in a point like a a sharpie point. Yeah, Maybe. something like that. But you you don't want a liquid glue here. You want this paste type glue. Okay, now then, I'm almost around here, folks. Maybe we'll work on that. We'll try to get, see if we can find somebody that'll do that. We gotta figure out how to do it ourselves. 
<laughs> I do that a lot. Okay, and we'll keep on going around here. The only thing I've found with this glue technique is you kind of need a wash rag or it's a licky finger type thing when you get done to clean your fingers off, which is not all that bad. No, but if we could get somebody to make it in a point, then we wouldn't, wouldn't have to. Wouldn't that be wonderful? I need to go talk to the Elmer's glue people. Yeah. Sure, I can. Good luck. Yeah. But I Hold think Shannon's got a good idea. Quilters Hold unite. I mean, that, there's, yeah. And when I do the glue, I also don't have to worry about getting the foundation damp and having it turn where it fold in where it shouldn't. Okay. All right. Now you got that turned. It looks pretty good. Okay. From where she's at, now we got our hole in the middle. There's our hole finished in the middle. Now I've got to trim this stuff off on the dotted line. And I the probably could have done this beforehand, but then sometimes showing you and creeping through the process is beneficial, I hope. Okay. We've got a comment that says the Bowen glue stick um, has may, more narrow tip than Elmer's. I may need to check that out. Thank you. Bowen? The Bowen? People, oh, that may, they make needles, sewing needles. I know. She said they make a glue stick, too. Oh, good. So it has a more narrow tip. We'll have to check that out. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going to check that one out. Okay. We're all turned, and I've already stitched around here. Now comes... All right. Okay. Right yeah. side up. There's what we're looking at. And the long piece goes across the middle. Now, I made the stitching on there. The applique placement The applique line. placement line. But truthfully, on this one, you don't have to have it. Here's why. You line up the seam with the center of that piece. Okay. That's all you have to do. And I'm pinning. I don't like to pin on this because... It tends to distort, but there's no way I can get a clamp that big to go in there. Clips are not that that long. They don't have that right. Big Clips throat. aren't that long. They don't have that big a throat. Okay. And I don't have any applique pins here, but that's okay. I don't even think I own any. Well, I do, but they're kind of not here. No. Okay. Now this is a little bit open when you applique that down that A's is going to disappear and so you're lining up these seam lines on each one of this quarters when you put the quarters with the center of this mm -hmm. or with this white piece in the middle that's how you're lining it up that's how I'm lining it up okay now I'm going to try a little hand applique and you all know hand applique is not always my long suit but that's all right okay so now at this point, if you were going to machine applique, you just put it under your machine foot, set your zigzag to whatever you want or your decorative stitch, however you, and then applique around it. And I've even seen some really neat appliques when they've stitched right on the edge, right on the fold, just a straight stitch, and it looks good too. It's almost like a top stitch. Almost. So right. basically the applique at this point, whether it's done by hand or it's done by machine, that finishes the block. Yeah. And you just have to work... Make sure that you hold it flat to work any ease in that might be there. And actually, that's just, that's going to work in easy. That's going to work in really. And I'm not piercing the foundation down here oh, with the a needle. Picture. Yeah. That's uh, from Fonz. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll have to take a look at that. Fonz does as well. All right. Oh, Fonz and Porter? Yeah. Okay, well, okay. how about little, that? We're, we're going to go on a hunt for a point of view. Yes, we are. Okay. Thank you, ladies. Now, I cannot see my thread, and I'm. If the light's probably going to mess everybody else up. We've got the room practically dark so that we can get the video right here. So, okay. At this point, it's just putting the applique down. Do Is there anything, any questions anybody has? Anything that you want to see or hear or anything we need to go over again? The only thing I'll go back and do is go, is cut off these little dog ears that are sticking out here because it, and the block basically is done. It is done at that point. Okay. Okay. Test of time. Is it five and a half inches? 
from here to here is five and a half inches. Yep. And it is. It's five and a half inches over here. So we're good. Inches. Our so block is the right size. The block is exactly the right size. Yeah. Okay. And I'll finish the applique later. But that's, that's how we do this block. And once I got part of this out of the way, yeah, the cliffhanger part went away. It's in pretty good shape now. I'm I'm happy with it. Okay. Is there is there anything? Do you want to sit here? Yeah, we're done. done there. Is there anything we'll that anybody's later. got questions on? And I'm thank you for the 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 glue things. I'm gonna look at those. Those are those are good ideas. The challenge is, is that Elmer's is always going to be cheaper than anybody else. Yeah, it will. Yeah. Um, and I think uh, for a price point, it's so easy to get. I go there. I usually go in August and and go to go to Walmart when they have it on sale. And I just get like 20 or 30 rolls of it and stick it up there. And then every August I go get another batch. So the price point is a big thing, but maybe we can figure out some way to get something that's a little less expensive and and gives us the point that we'd like to have. So project for me to think about. Hmm. Among other things. <laughs> okay. Anything else anybody wants to know or anything we would need to go back over or see on the block or pieces or anything like that? No? Okay. We done good, huh? Okay. Well in that case then I think we're going do to wanna, pardon do you want do you want to end the recording and then I want to talk to you for a minute? Sure. If you're okay with that. I am fine with that.